Hello and welcome to the crash course video showing you how to use Sandworm. First, we would need to install the plugin. In your Rhino session, type in package manager. In the search field, just search for Sandworm. You select the plugin, verify that it's the correct one, hit install, and Rhino will prompt you to restart. Once you have done that, you can start Grasshopper. Navigate to the Sandworm tab and choose the only component that's available, drag and drop into the canvas. To make sure that you're working with the correct Kinect sensor, go to the Sensor tab and under Sensor Type drop-down menu, choose either Kinect for Windows or one of the two supported field of views for the Kinect Azure. I'm working with the narrow field of view. You might still have trouble seeing the geometry, so just select the component, right-click on the canvas, and select Zoom from the drop-down menu. Now we can see the extents of what the camera sensor can see as well. To better visualize what we're actually looking at, Go to the Analysis tab, and then from the Analysis type, select the Camera. Now it's easier for us to define the frame that we're interested in. Go back to the Sensor tab, and using the Columns and Rows controls, trim off the unwanted pieces of the image. Next, we need to tell Sandworm what is the distance between the geometry that it's looking at and the actual Kinect sensor. We do this by tweaking the sensor elevation slider. Alternatively, we could click the Calibrate Elevation button and let the plugin do this for us. This pretty much concludes the technical setup. Now it's time for the fun part. Let's go back to the Analysis tab and look at the options that we're presented with. First, we can choose between displaying our geometry as a mesh or as a point cloud. We can also switch between different analysis types. We're already familiar with the camera, but there are a few other options for us to choose from. Depending on which one you select, you might want to choose one of the predefined color palettes. You can also provide a custom color palette using built-in Grasshopper tools. Try playing with the color gradient range slider to see what kind of effect it has on the color palette. The remaining three sliders in this tab help us examine the mesh. We can control the size and the density of the elevation labels as well as their brightness. We can also control whether the contours are displayed and at what interval. One of the analysis types that needs a little bit more explanation is Cut and Fill. To activate it, provide a custom mesh that you want to compare your geometry against. Once you have connected everything, hit Reset. Any geometry that's below the mesh that you just provided will be shown in red. Everything above it will be green. Black means that you're on the same level. Connecting a panel to the stats output will give you more detailed information about the actual differences. In the next tab, we can look at functionality related to water flow. Adjusting the water level slider will move a water plane along the z-axis. Increasing flow line's length allows you to simulate the stormwater flow directions on the surface. Try playing with the raindrop spacing slider to adjust the density. To see how your topography would perform during a flood event, tick the appropriate checkbox and hit the Make it Rain button. The final tab gives us control over how accurately our geometry is being scanned. The depth data coming from any Kinect sensor is a bit noisy. Averaging across multiple frames allows us to remove some of this noise. This concludes this brief introduction to Sandworm. I hope you're going to have fun using it, and I'm excited to hear about the use cases that you're going to come up with. Thanks a lot for tuning in.